Paul Cade, the potentially the oldest surviving professional footballer in the world. How, how does that sound? <laughs> it sounds really good. <laughs> Long way, I reign. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us about your memories of playing at Stockport. Well, yes, it uh, started very early in 1936 and uh, went on to 37 and 38. And uh, I enjoyed those three years, you know, prior to war breaking out. And uh, and me going into the Air Force. Yes, when I was playing for Rochdale, I uh, I was up against Stanley Matthews quite a few times, and uh, we had some really uh, really good games. Uh, I think uh, with it being area football during that period, uh, Blackpool seemed to be in uh, in the same area as Rochdale, so came up against him quite a lot. And what was he like to play against? And he was uh, a very, very difficult man to play against, I'll tell you. Uh, the only way that you could uh, deal with him is to uh, allow him to go down the wing and not allow him to come inside. Because once he came inside, you'd no chance. And did you did you ever speak to him after the game? After the game, we uh, we had quite a few meals together after the game, and uh, he was uh, he was quite a nice guy, you know. But he he, he wasn't a socialiser, uh, and the, the reason he was able to stay playing top-class football when he was 50 years old, you know, was a wonderful effort. And on your, your own professional debut for Stockport, it, sort of, it ended in a little bit of disaster for yourself. You scored an own goal. Oh, that's right, yeah. Scored, scored an own goal, yeah. And uh, I remember pushing the ball back to the to the goalkeeper, but the goalkeeper was out of his goal and uh, I'd, I'd lobbed it and, uh, and it was uh, a terrible thing for me really. And uh, as I've said before, the, uh, the cartoonist uh, in the local paper uh, put the cartoon in the, in the paper and uh, it was me disappearing down a hole in the ground. <laughs> so George, when, when you played professionally for Stockport, how much were you paid per week? I was paid uh, five pound fifty a week. And the uh, the limit for all footballers was ten pound a week. So uh, and when I come to think that I uh, I was fighting for more for more, more money with the players and trainers unions. Uh, and I, I always uh, feel that I, I'm responsible really for the, the wages that they gain today, and I'm not. <laughs> what, what do you think about the wages of football players? Today? Absolutely ridiculous. They should put a, a cap on, on all the wages because when all said and done, football is a team game. And to think that you were, you were playing in the same team, that's getting 10,000 a week, or even more, and, or even more the, uh, it's very sad really, you know, because as I say, it's a team game. And everybody's uh, responsible for what that team does. And what do you think about the rise of diving and sort of players rolling around on the floor after they're tackled in the modern game? Well, they, 
the modern game now with the uh, players rolling about on the on the ground, you know, is is absolutely ridiculous. And I think it's come from abroad, you know. I don't think it's a, an English thing at all, you know. I think the uh, the uh, foreign players that have brought, been brought into the game, you know, in this country, they're the ones who started it. And uh, it is a ridiculous situation. And certainly not fair to the game. No, 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 no. They'd have been. Uh, they, they, they wouldn't. <laughs> they wouldn't have been allowed to do it. You know. They'd, uh, it'd be a matter of get up, man. Don't. <laughs> you're not. You're not hurt. Get up and get get on with the game. <laughs>